All right, welcome back. Today we're talking about Kfold cross validation, a very important tool in your toolkit for assessing uh, how well your model is working with the data that you have. Okay, so here is what we normally do. We have a data set and we usually split it into a training set and a test set. And uh, from here, we're going to talk about Kfold cross validation. But first, I wanted to make a quick note that um, so there is there are two schools of thought. Well, bas basically, one school of thought is that when you're doing case fold cross validation, you don't need the test set. It is enough to do k fold cross validation. In the second uh, school of thought, you still do the test set and you do k fold cross validation on the uh, training set, uh, and then you still use the test set later on. So those are two different approaches. We are going to talk more about that at the end of this tutorial. In um, throughout this tutorial, we're going to use a second school of thought because it's more um, it's more general, and then we'll be able to um, like simplify it to make it uh, appropriate for the first school of thought at the end of this tutorial when we discuss it. So for now, let's uh, stick to breaking the data set into a training set and a test set. Now, once you've broken it down, what you do next for k-fold cross validation? So normally, what you would do is you would just train your model here and then test your model here. Right, and uh, from that you would get like a result. Yes, the model hasn't seen this data, so you'd be able to tell how well it performs on this test set. But what if you just get lucky on this test set? What if it just so happens that it show, does well in test set, but then on future data it's not going to do well at all? So that's what k-fold cross validation is for. It's here to combat that scenario where you just got lucky on the test set to ensure with more certainty that your model is doing well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the training set and we're going to split it into uh, 10 folds. It's actually K folds, but uh, for our uh, tutorial, for simplicity's sake, we're just going to assume K equals to 10. So we're splitting into 10 folds. A fold is just a fancy word for saying we're going to split into 10 parts. Each part is about the, they're all about the same in size and they don't overlap. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to train the data on uh, nine of these folds and keep one fold as an unseen uh, fold for validation. So that's, going to, that's going to be our training data and that's going to be our validation data. Think of it as uh, basically training data, testing data, but we're going to use validation so we don't confuse with this test, testing, testing data. So we're going to train it on this, this data of these nine folds and then validate or find our metrics and calculate whatever we need to calculate of how well our model is performing on this uh, validation, set, uh, validation fold because it has not seen it before. Great. Then we're going to do that again, but now we're going to shift the validation fold. The validation fold becomes this fold. So now we're going to train the data on the on this data set, right? On these uh, nine folds. And as you can see, it's slightly so the training data has slightly changed, and the fold is completely new, or the validation fold is completely new. And again, it's not going to be seen during this training. So we're going to get a new model as a result of this training, uh, a new trained model, and we're going to validate on this fold. And note every time we do this for every fold or every like combination of folds. So here and here, we have to use the same hyperparameters. Very important. So we've decided on our hyperparameters and now we're just uh, training the model again and again on slightly different training data and validating it on the validating fold, which is changing, which is shifting as you can see. So here's our six training. So we train it on all of this data and then validate it on this fold, which is not seen during training. So we keep doing that and we keep shifting, shifting. So if we have 10 folds, we're going to have to do train, mo 10 train, train 10 models. And each time we're going to use the same hyperparameter. So the model, hyperpar the model and the hyperparameters are the same during training. Of course, it will result and it, it'll be a different, slightly different result. And then we'll validate it on the validation fold. And uh, as a result, we will have 10 sets of metrics. Remember, if we just did the training set and the test set, just the normal two, then we would have one set of metrics that we could have gotten lucky. Whereas here, we're going to have 10 sets of metrics. It's much uh, less likely that we got lucky 10 times, right? So it's much more reliable now that we're going to have uh, 10 sets of metrics and we can look at them in aggregate. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's ma make some space. And here we're going to assess this, these metrics and look at them in aggregate. And if these metrics look good in aggregate, then the modeling approach is valid. So the model you've selected and the hyperparameters you selected are good for this data. And then what we're going to do is we're going to train the model. We're going to go and train the model one more time, one last time. This time we're going to train it on all of the training data. 
and then we're going to test it on the test set as usual. That's our final step. On the other hand, if the aggregate metrics don't look good, then something's wrong. Then otherwise we need to, if so basically they don't look, if, if they don't look good, we need to adjust hyperparameters of the model or we have to change the model entirely and repeat this whole process of k-fold cross-validation. So that's what k-fold cross-validation is and that's how it works. As we discussed at the beginning, there's a few schools of thought. This was the second school, or they don't really have numbers. This was one of the schools of thoughts that says we should have the training set, apply k-fold cross-validation to the training set, assess the metrics, then retrain the model on the training set once we're happy, and then still test it on test set. The other school of thought says, let's get rid of this testing step, right? So we've already uh, run the model here many times, and we've tested it on these validation metrics. So we're just going to train the model on the training set and we will no need to test it anymore. We've tested it, we know it works. Uh, then there's a modification of that school of thought as well where you don't even train it on this training set anymore. So you just say, okay, well, we've uh, trained the model 10 times here. We've got 10 different models as a result. We've tested all of them, so we don't need to do the test and we're not gonna do the training. We're just gonna pick one of these models. Um, that is kind of like a little bit challenging in my view, like how do you pick which one to go with? You're going to just take the one of the mo the best metrics or the, the closest metrics to the average. So it's, it creates a little bit of extra work to pick the model out of these because they're all going to be slightly different models uh, because the underlying training data was slightly different. So um, that's also an option. And then there's yet another modification of how to think about k-fold cross-validation. Um, what you could do is you could take uh, this part and do it first, you know, do the classic part first, split your data into a training set and a test set, train your model on the training set, test it on the test set. And then if you're happy with the results of this classic approach, you could go an extra step and apply k-fold cross-validation. So do all of this, but after you've done the training and testing. And so then once you've done all of this, if your aggregate metrics still look good, then you can confirm and say, well, I'm happy uh, that even like, uh, like I, I didn't get lucky on the test set. Basically, it was indeed it, the fact that it works on the test set uh, is, um, is not just a, a chance. In reality, we te I tested it later. I tested it with K-fold cross-validation. It still works. So I'm just going to keep my original model that I trained in this first approach. So in this case, K-fold cross-validation is acting as like an add-on to your classic method. So it's kind of the same thing as we discussed um, as the, 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 what's it called? <laughs> the general, the most general K-fold cross-validation when you do all of this first and then you train and then you test, it's kind of the same thing, but it's just doing it backwards. So you can do that too. Um, whatever, whatever you're happy with, whatever works for you, as long as uh, you know why you're doing it and you know, um, like what results you're aiming for, and you know how to assess uh, the uh, indications that k-fold cross-validation is giving to you. Uh, the rest of the details, there's no like one hard and fast way that you have to do it as long as you get the out, or get the benefits of k-fold cross-validation that you're aiming to get. And of course, you don't let uh, the, tra the validation data leak into the training data, so you don't let the model see the validation data during training or the test set during training set if you're doing those. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning and I look forward to seeing you there.